In the northeastern corner of Italy exists a small mountain commune known as Cavalese. Geographically located among the Italian Dolomites, Cavalese sits in a valley surrounded by skyscraping mountains and truly remarkable scenery. Beyond the region's beauty, the area is a renowned summer destination for hikers and a winter hub for skiers and snowboarders. One of the major ski resorts connected by Cavalese is known as Alpe Chermis, home to a world-class collection of ski runs totaling more than 23 kilometers in length. Between the busy mountain resort above and the bustling town of Cavalese below, the region is an idyllic recreational destination, branded as a bright, vibrant place, but hiding an unfortunate and tragic past. In 1968, the Alpe Chermis Resort opened a new state-of-the-art aerial tramway system connecting the town of Cavalese with its mid-mountain terminus at just over 3,200 feet in elevation. The three-mile-long system featured two large gondolas that ran along support cables opposite each other, shuttling ski resort guests up and down the mountain. The new aerial tramway system was a critical investment for the resort. Through the mid-1960s, as the resort enjoyed growing popularity among vacationers from Italy, Austria, Switzerland, Germany, and France, Alpe Chermis was in need of higher capacity equipment to handle the growing volume of guests. But even with the addition of the new aerial tramway, Alpe Chermis struggled to accommodate the record numbers of guests flocking to the resort year over year. As a result, management acknowledged that unpalatable conditions, such as lengthy lines for the lifts, were contributing to lower guest satisfaction. And given the competitive nature of ski resorts in the region, plans were drafted quickly to address the operational issues. One of the strategies employed to address capacity issues was to operate the tramway at a faster speed, a tactic highly discouraged by the lift manufacturer. Against the guidelines published in the lift's official operations and safety manual, resort management increased the average speed of the aerial tramway, cutting the trip from six and a half minutes to five and a half minutes. At the new higher speed, when a filled gondola passed over a support pylon, the tension and weight caused instability between the static support cables and the haul cable responsible for moving the cabins. Operation staff had noted instances where the support and haul cables crossed and came into contact with one another. As this had happened on multiple occasions, operations management manually disengaged a standard safety feature that automatically shut down the system when it detected that cables had crossed. On the evening of March 9th, 1976, 44 passengers, including two operators, boarded the aerial tramway at the Mid-Mountain Station in preparation for their return trip to the town of Cavalese. The fully loaded cabin was packed with skiers and their equipment returning from a day on the mountain. As the loaded gondola descended down the mountain, it approached the final pylon, roughly 700 feet from the base station. It rolled up onto the pylon as the guide wheels kept the cable in line. But the tension release on the cables would create a bouncing effect, which caused the moving haul cable to cross the support cable, severing it with force. The massive support cable collapsed, whipping toward the base station where it smashed through windows. The gondola rolled off the pylon and plunged more than 200 feet to the ground. Upon impact, the car was completely crushed by the three-ton metal carriage assembly that sits on top of the cabin, instantly killing most of the passengers. The haul cable, still moving, dragged the entirety of the wreckage another 300 feet, suffocating those that were still alive before coming to rest 
just 400 feet from the base station. 43 people were killed in what is now regarded as one of the worst cable car accidents in history. A 14-year-old girl who was on a school trip was the only survivor. An inquest into the accident found culpability among resort officials who were shown to blatantly disregard safety mandates imparted by the cable car manufacturer. The accident soon made headlines around the world and left the small commune of Cavalese reeling. It would take decades for the town to recover from its association with the accident. But as a new generation of skiers descended upon Alpe Chermis into the 1990s, the resort had returned to growth with expanded terrain and new lift systems. The future was looking bright with resort officials optimistic for the dawn of a new millennium. However, as the new millennium drew near, darkness would once again return to Cavalese. The same aerial tramway line would suffer yet another horrific tragedy on February 3rd, 1998. An incident known the world over as the Chermis Massacre. My name is Scott, and thank you so much for watching. We're a group of curious and passionate humans, creating documentary-style content for those who share our curiosity, ask questions, and seek to dig deeper in a world where almost everything isn't quite what it seems. We are Mystery Syndicate. Check us out on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Patreon, and visit our website at www.mysterysyndicate.com. And don't forget to like our videos and subscribe to our channel on YouTube. From all of us at Mystery Syndicate, thank you again. We sincerely appreciate your support.